I'm not sure what I really should do because um, I'm doing the best I can because I'm a caregiver and I want to do the best for my family. My mom, she used to know me, but now she doesn't know my name or know who I am. I take her on every doctor visit and none of the family's just jumping in to help me. I need a break. I need somebody to understand. I love my mother and I'm, I'm and I love being a caregiver, but it's just so hard sometimes and so stressful sometimes. And I just need some help. I need a number or my family to start helping me or just send me a program. I just don't know what else to do. But I do know this. This is the Lisa Baxter Show, giving you the 411 in the kidney world. Well, good night and good afternoon. How you guys are doing? I'm so glad you tuned in. I am so sorry that it was late, but you know how technical difficulty is. I ain't the only one know it, so I know you know it too. I wanted to say, uh, show you the pumpkin. My uh, great nephew went pumpkin picking, and this is one of the things that he picked up. All right? So he's just a baby. So do some things with your children. Do some things with your grandchildren. Even if it's just a little thing, they'll remember it for the rest of their life. Well, I am going to start this show. I'm going to break it down, and we're going to take it easy, and we're going to drive forward. First of all, I would like to introduce my guest. My guest is Patrick E. Davis Kennedy. He is the CEO of Dunamis Protection, and he resides in Harlem. This guy was raised by a kidney warrior, and he married a kidney warrior. How you like them apples? Crunch, crunch. All right. Come on. Uh, come on. <laughs> come on, Patrick. Hi. Grace and peace to you. Ah, thank you. A well, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I ain't mad at you. Amen. Now, Patrick, we're going to start off this nice journey and ride by talking about what you do. Tell us what you do, Patrick. Well, I recently started my own security company about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Been doing Thank you. Been doing security for almost 30 years off and on. Between mm -hmm. that and working in the healthcare field, yeah. being a caregiver like yourself. Ah. You no know, care caring for my mother, the late Pastor Kennedy. Uh-huh. And, you know, among caring for others in the hospital, nursing home, hospice situation. Mm -hmm. And recently... I stopped working for a while to care for my late wife. Yes. Um, it's still kind of fresh, still kind of hard. Oh no! I know. I'm taking it. I know. I'm taking it. I'm taking it day by day. Yes, of course. I know. You know. I understand. I lost Amen. my husband myself. I was married for 23 years, and you know, I, it's still a journey. And it's been, it's been four years, but I still got my ring on. I mean, you know, I love the Lord and I, I, I love that relationship I had with my baby. So it takes time. And it, it, I guess you always love them. You always miss them. And, if, you know, you feel a little empty without them. But I'm yeah. glad and proud of you because you started a company. How did you get that company started? Well, um, I've been doing some research for some years now. Mm -hmm. And I guess saying I'm tired of working for other people. I'm tired of working for other people. Okay. I love I love doing security. I love helping people. Mm -hmm. I love servicing people. As you know, I'm also a former armor bearer to our great Bishop Rochard, Robert Rochard, you know, okay. who I love very dearly. Yes. And yes. um you know, right. known him, known, yes. No known him since I was nine years old, so eight, nine years old. Right. So I know. I know. And yeah. um I shadowed uh, Apostle Mallory for a while. He uh -huh. taught me, trained me into it. He and was on the show a couple of weeks ago. Wow. Yes. And so when he couldn't make it, I would go, or both of us would go at the same time and assist Bishop. Okay. So I always care for serving others yes. and helping others. But I said, the only way I'm going to make it in life is to produce my own. Right. And some years ago, the Lord gave me the name Dunamis. Mm -hmm. Meaning power, you know, right? 
power, dynamite, yeah. explosion. Dynamite. Boom. You know? Yes. So, um, and of course, that's the name of Bishop um, du Jurisdiction, yes, it is. Jurisdiction, under the late Archbishop Roy Brown. So, right. as you as you know, as well as I do. <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, we, we served in the same church together. You know, amen. we know each other's families. You you off to a great yeah. start. I, I'm just proud of you because you started your own business. That's not easy you. when you're a caregiver. That's not easy when you lost someone. It's hard to put the pieces back together sometimes. So there'll amen. be sweet moments and heart help heart felt moments, but the love will always be there. Yes, you it know, will. so I'm gonna I mean, start. Hmm, go ahead, I'm sorry. I said, in both, in, unfortunately, in both occasions, losing my mom, the devil, I let the devil interfere with me slightly, where I felt like cursing God and dying, just like Job. All right, you're in the but, Bible. But, you know, I fought the temptation. Yes, I wanted to die, because I felt God should have taken me instead of her. You mm. know, same thing happened again with Tasha. You know, um, my queen, you know, I felt she was doing more to serve the Lord and to help others than I was in that in the ministry capacity. Yeah, and I felt, you know, kind of destroyed when I was getting we was hearing all these prophecies, as far as God restoring her vision, um, healing the kidneys, restoring her health, the, um, get rid of the diabetes and everything like that, all the complications she was having in her life. Yes. And when all these things didn't happen, her life started going downward. You know, I got angry. And again, when I got the phone call, I was out and about, um, actually in another state, and I got the phone call that um, they couldn't wake her up. Yes. First thing came to my mind was, oh, God, why? And I did, made, my, made it my business to get back to the house as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So I lost money in the process, but nevertheless, my family come first. You lost a treasure. That's right. Yeah. So, and she's one that could never be replaced. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. No. Well, and we, we known each other, dealing with each other off and on for 15 years, but we was blessed with a handsome, intelligent 12 year old. Excellent. So now I'm raising him and I'm doing the best I can. Yeah, you're a single you know, parent now. So I do. Yes. That. And you, know? you mentioned you mentioned something about family, friends, somebody helping helping out with your mom and stuff like that. That's yeah, how that I was felt. A skit, but yeah, that was a skit, even though I, it was my mother's caregiver for real. I have been right. a caregiver three times already. But um those things do happen, you know what I mean? I know what you right. mean. People get angry with God, upset. I, I asked him myself, why you took Mitch? That's the only thing I had. I didn't have children. Exactly. All I needed was, you know, at least him. But I right. did get 23 years, and I learned to be grateful with that. And it's very, and I know it can be hard. He, he it's told, very hard. I said, God, why you took Mitch? He said, he called me, and I took him home. That's just what God said. He called me, and I took mm. him home. I can't argue with God. That's his child. He owns us all. But, Amen. But what I wanted to ask you about is, okay, we're going to start with your mother because your mother dealt with cancer and dialysis. So how yes. was it being a caregiver for your mom, uh, Pastor Kennedy, who I served with also as a, uh, as a, um, a prayer warrior? Well, being a caregiver for her was difficult. It was pleasurable and sorrow at the same time. Of course, of course. Because, you know, being an intercessor and being a son of an intercessor, you know, you believe God for certain things and believe things that happen a certain way. And I come to realize taking care of her was a joy. Amen. You know, God, the doctor said, when we found out that she had cancer, the doctor said six months to a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, but God extended that, gave her additional 10, 11 years. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm, gra I'm, 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 I'm grateful for that. But by the same token, I was angry because I was believing for her healing. 
You well, know the word of God. They can be throwing the dirt on the person. That's how deep I believe God. They can be putting them into the ground, and I say, "Oh no, He's going to get them. He's going to resurrect them." We are. That's because you have a relationship with God from young. You just really believe He could just do the impossible, which He can. But yeah. sometimes a person is sick. You don't know what they're praying. If their prayer is to leave or go home, He's going to honor their prayer way over hours and. I didn't want to be selfish and let none of my brothers and sisters suffer. And I told them if they saw God, then to go with him. And that was Amen. hard for me to say with tears in my eyes. You understand? But yes, I know definitely. you're feeling what you're feeling. So, you know, right. so you, when she had to deal with uh, cancer or dialysis, did you ever go with other treatment? Um, Not to um the treatment. I went to pick her up. Okay. On several occasions, I went to meet her at the dialysis a few times. Uh-huh. At Downstate Hospital, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, the nurses, technician, doctors, some of them was very nasty. Mean, the huh? Last you time, and the last time um, she was there, they sent her home with walking. They sent her home with pneumonia. Mm. She had a fever. She was crying. She was in pain. Mm-mm. They didn't want to do nothing to help her, or whatever. And and from my heart to hearts, I believe my family should have sued the hospital for the incompetence. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we left well enough alone because they said if we sue this one, then we have to involve every other medical facilities that have been involved in her care. Okay, wow. So, so I said, all right. Right. So I said, okay, you know what? Let's leave it alone thing. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But it still didn't sit right with me. Yes. You know, but again, I'm grateful that God gave me the time he did with her. You know, um... She been. She was a big part of helping me raise my beautiful twenty four year old daughter. Amen. You know, Amen. up until oh, the age she was three. She, she yeah. loved you. Yeah, she talked about you all the time. Right. Um. She was a big part of raising her, a lot of her other grandchildren. Mm-hmm. So she left a legacy, which I'm find, finding hard to follow. Wow. Um. Everyone tell me her mentors upon me. I had to pick up that cross and. Continue on. I I'm not I'm not Pastor Kennedy. I'm Patrick. Right. You know, but well, everybody's calling me Minister. I lived in Philadelphia for a short time, and everybody asked me, "Are you a pastor? Are you a preacher?" And I'm like, "No," but I always find myself talking about the goodness of God, in spite of everything, in spite of circumstances and situations. Oh yeah. I always find myself talking about the goodness of God. Yes. And how mercy merciful He is. Very Even though it bothers me sometimes, I still do it. Sometimes I doubt God because uh circumstances I've been through. Yes. You know, with my mom. Right. So I learned to just suppress it and ask God to heal me from the inside out. To oh, heal I like me. That. Yes. Help me forgive those that have done me wrong. Help me forgive those that have done my mother wrong. Okay. And keep pushing forward. Because yes. if I cannot forgive, then how can I expect the Father to forgive me? That's the word. That's the word. Now, did you, you know, ever go with her to her cancer treatments or anything like that? I remember visiting her at the hospital and we, you know, went there and we prayed. She mentored a group of us. Right. Well, I know every time she went for treatment, she had an aide with her. I was at work or somewhere else. But I always end up down down there afterwards, or as I right. taking care of business, doing running around. Right. So I always was there afterwards and stuff like that. Um, at that point, she was um, eligible for a um, bone marrow transplant, okay. but um, unfortunately, you know, a lot of us wasn't able to contribute because of high blood pressure. Or other health illnesses. Wow. You know, someone's had high blood pressure, high blood pressure, some of us wasn't eating right, you know, different stuff like that. So yeah. it will prevent you from being a donor. Of course. I'm you glad know, you said as, that. As, yeah. as you know, as you know, um being being a former kidney um dialysis patient. Yep. You know, I also well, always I, I, I also offered to give my kidney for Tasha. Excellent. Tasha, Tasha didn't want it. I didn't want bitches she, either. And she kept telling me, no, baby, no, no, baby, no. And I said, listen, if it means giving you a ch- fighting chance, if it means giving you more time here, 
yes. take it. Yes. But she didn't want to do it. She refused. Um, she didn't want to do the transplant because all the side effects, all the negative stories she's heard about it. Um, she was succeeded by her mother, who also passed from kidney failure um, pr- prior to her. So we dealt with a lot of situations. I can see that. For, you know, as far as kidney, situ- kidney failure. Yes. Um, yeah. The diet is a very important part of it. Um, I try to try to give her what she likes and what she wanted, but at the same time, try to stick with the diet as much as I could. Yes. I also try to um, give her the things that they say she shouldn't have or couldn't have. Yeah. A little bit every so often. Like now, you shouldn't. know, yeah. You know, every once in a while, I'll make collard greens for her. You know, yeah. collard greens, high in phosphorus. Y'all not supposed to have that. Mm-hmm. You know, well, chocolate. You your homework. I ain't not, mad at you. Chocolate, mm. y'all not supposed to have. Right. Ice cream, certain things like that. But I would buy her the, the sherbet, which she could have. Yeah. And once in a while, I had my ice cream, and I would give her a little bit. Yeah. Once in a while, I'll have certain things that I love, like my ch- cheesecakes. Ooh. You know, I and I would give her a little bit once in a while, you know, as a treat. No, because she right. she does she did very well, uh-huh. you know. So I had no problem sharing with her. I had no problem doing what I did for her. Mm-hmm. You know, I wish I had some help, you know, taking care of her. But unfortunately, I know I didn't. And you know what? I gripped my teeth and beer. It was up to the last year, last Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving last year, went to my oldest brother Ricky's house uh-huh. for Thanksgiving. And um, when he seen what I had to deal with on a daily basis, transferring her from a chair to the wheelchair, from the wheelchair yeah. to the bed, just uh, carrying her up and down stairs and stuff. Like, he's like, I never knew you had this much on you. Yeah. You know, I know she, he was like, I never knew you had that much on you. Right. And I was like, yeah, this is something I deal with daily. It's mm-hmm. not a big thing for me. Yes. You know, so it opened their eyes, getting a little bit more respect towards me. Because okay. they seen that I was battling and doing this all by myself. And I wasn't asking nobody for nothing. You know, and that's me. If, I, if I'm in a situation, I'm going to do it the best I can. But you know, also, you know, if, you know, if, you're, the, if you're the caregiver. I, hold on. Hold, hold on. Right. Go, go ahead. Oh. Handle yours. Yeah. I ain't yeah. mad at you. But, when you're the only yeah, caregiver, so, when you're the only caregiver and you burn out, then the you the person really has nobody. That's why sometimes you got to either ask for help or let somebody help you or hire some help. I finally got Mitch a home attendant because he didn't want it. I, and I had to pay somebody on the side while I went to dialysis, you know, for him that he trusts because he gave me a hard time about that. But when a person is sick, they do and say a lot of things, but we, we try to love them. We're there for them. We do love them, you know? So I see you did a, a, a good job with your mom. But um, how did, uh, uh, well, how was. I wish I'd known. I, I would I have helped you with Tasha. <laughs> I mean, with Mitch. I would help you oh. with Mitch if I'd have known. Thank you. I'm glad to know somebody. Well, I, I, do that. You know, because Mitch was my brother, you know, my friend, you know. Yeah. I looked up to him in many ways, you know, and he, like you said, y'all known me for, for many years, so. Oh, yeah, since you were young, very young, yeah. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so when I was, since I was a teen, so. That's right, young fella. Now, how yeah. was your marriage before uh, Tasha got sick as opposed to when she got sick? Well, it was pretty good. I mean, we still had trust issues. We had, um... Mm, well, even challenges. on the medical side of it, yeah. You know, we had challenges um, on both sides, but when she got sick, it became more challenging. Mm. Um, she became more stubborn, I'll say. But you sickness know. can do that. Yeah. So, but, you know, she's... and. They don't want her get becoming depressed, extremely depressed, made made me feel some kind of way. 
Of course. She was ready to take the she was ready to take the marriage straw down the toilet. She was ready to just walk away. You know, just put me in the nursing home. You and Zay go on your own. Wow. You and Zay just keep the apartment, whatever. Just let put me in a home. Let them I said no. When I did this, it was for better or worse. Sickness and health. Until you say that again. Was part. Yes, say that because si- I told Mitch the same thing. You, did, you didn't sign up for all of this. But being married, you signed up for everything when you signed the paper. But exactly. I, told them, I gave you a chance to run away before we got married. Now you stuck with me. But, you know, <laughs> but um, you do try to I don't I didn't want to be so much a burden on him because I got sick first. He got sick after me years later. But I was sick for years. You know what I mean? Right. But we were healthy when we got married. So, th- well, so. Yes, amen. I remember. My yeah, mother was, was there. The yeah, you was there. Yeah. I ain't mad at you. I was glad to see you. You know, now what, what, did you ever go with Tasha to dialysis or anything? All the time. I because ain't mad the, at you. the agencies, the agencies didn't want to send an aide to take her there. A lot wow. of times they didn't want to send an aide to, to bring her back. You should have called me because I had some people on them. So I got tired of fighting with them. As you know, I just do everything myself. Yeah. I said, mm-hmm. the he- excuse my expression. I said, the hell with y'all. Mm-hmm. The heck with everything. I do it myself. I've been doing it myself. I continue doing it myself. Yeah, I did it by and myself that's what I did. a long time. Yes. You know, I and took her hard. to treatment. Mm-hmm. I took her to treatment. I helped. I even helped the tech set her up and everything. Yeah. You know, I helped the tech set up. Um. Then I turned around and um, broke things down, um, took her back home. In between, I was making dinner, everything, trying to make things sure everything was proper for her when she finished. Yes. Sometimes she should get sick um, if she ate right after treatment. She become mm-hmm. nauseous and start to, you know, regurgitate. Yeah. You're right. You know, so... And I'm going to explain that a little bit more because everybody don't know what regurgitate means. Uh, it was, you grow up. up, we know. That's, yeah, I got it. You know. I ain't mad at you. Yet. But everybody, 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 everybody not, hasn't don't have experience in medical field. Everybody don't know what right. it means. Why so I'm that's why I, you know change. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going for service on you. So, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So therefore, I mean, like I said, it was a joy and a blessing and a pleasure to have her in my life. As long as I had her in my life, even though we had our ups and downs, we had our battles, you know, there's many days she tell me, get out and walk, go, some, you know, just leave. And mm-hmm. I got to the point where I said, you know what? I ain't got to take this. Fine, I'll go. And I walk out, you know, for maybe like 20 minutes or something like that. But I, about 30 minutes a day, she's calling me, where you at? <laughs> uh, didn't you tell me to go? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it was funny. You know, she didn't think I would really walk out the house. Yeah. But don't tell me something if you don't mean it. Well, you That's know when you think you say a lot of things. And then when you yeah, ain't exactly. say a lot of things. So that was like... Dumb, exactly. The thing is, you came so, back, you stuck in there, you hung up with it. I, I'm glad. I'm exa- glad. I'm glad. Well, I wasn't going nowhere anyway. I was just going to go take a ride on the train for a couple hours, come back or whatever. Let her calm down. Do That's right. Air a walk, you know, you know, breathe. A ride on the train, a ride on a bus, walk down to the pier, whatever. Um, currently, I just recently moved to Florida. Oh, okay. ah, congratulations! So, thank you. I'm about maybe like an hour, hour and a half away from Minnesota, from um, Apostle Mallory. Yes. So, um, that's a blessing. You know, matter of fact, we just spoke yesterday. Good. And you know. And I hear uh, first, yeah. Uh, I hear first. Though. I hear first lady. I hear first lady. Um, Mallory was out in out in New York for the women's yeah, conference she was at, at New the Life. Women's conference that we had all weekend. She did. Right, so. Now, what have you learned from dialysis and cancer? Well, both are treatable. I mean, they're both curable from my from my perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not talking about. From far as medicine goes, far as our diet goes, far as our okay. diet, our trust, our faith, our belief in the Most High, and yes. um, too. that's really a big part of it. And like I said, our diet—you know—the doctors give us all these medications 
which all don't have side effects, but there's natural remedies to them all. There's natural herbs that we can take that will restore our kidneys, restore our bone marrow, restore our blood cells and stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff out there for us oh, that many. our people don't know about. Right. I dig a lot. I, I eat a lot. And I deal with I'm talking about natural herbs. Yeah, I'm natural you know, herbs, yeah. I'm not talking about right, I'm not talking about that stuff to, right. I'm not talking about the stuff the doctor tell you. But that stuff's going to killing us faster. <laughs> you know, well, because yeah. they give you something for high blood pressure, it affects your kidneys. That's right. Well, you've been they reading. Give you something, yeah. They give you something for uh, for um let's say for diabetes, it affects something else. Everything Eventually really affects start, something else. It's, it's never exactly. a hundred percent. We take a chance and we pray when we go to the doctors and stuff like that. Exactly. Even when we're totally. drinking the health teas too, you know, because sometimes it doesn't mix with certain medications. So you just gotta exactly. be careful. You and know, you have to learn to you have to break yourself away. If you're on prescribed medications, you have to break away from it slowly, gradually. You can't just yank yourself off because it, well, it would destroy you. Well, you got to watch what you do. You can't take it upon yourself to break away from nothing. Even though I've known people yeah. that did it and survived, I also know people that did it and died. So that's, that's the catch. That's the catch-22. Make the right, right decision. Don't job around. You know? Exactly. So, and that's, that's what I'm saying. We have to watch what we do and how we do it. Amen. Now, they told me, they told me I had high blood pressure. Um, they wanted me to take some medication. I said, I'm not taking it. You can write whatever you prescription you write, want. You could prescribe whatever you want. Don't mean I'm going to take it. They said, they said, why not? I said, because I know the side effects. I know what it does to the human body. And well, I'm not going to be another victim. Well, what are you doing to combat that, though? You just say, oh, I ain't taking another one and everything. Because when you're, I've known somebody that did that, too. The kidneys definitely shut down and they're still on dialysis. It's been a lot of years, over 20. So... What are you doing? What you had an herb that helped you, or did you take your blood pressure and see how it is daily since you're doing the herb thing? I check. I'll, I'll, I'll check my blood pressure on a regular basis. I All drink right. plenty of water. Mm -hmm. um, is it normalized? Plenty, plenty of, yeah. Right. Um, well, and I know the, re you. the reason. Well, but what I found out, my my pressure was elevated because my body been in a lot of pain. As you know, um, when we was at four thirty Rogers. Mm -hmm. I got hit by a car right outside right. of the church. Right. So injuries will cause your blood pressure to elevate. Okay. So that's what happened. So my from that, me falling out of a tree when I was younger, you know, and um me being in another accident when I was in Philadelphia. I was on a on a bus out there and the bus got into mm -hmm. an accident. So some of my injuries re was re aggravated. Mm. So now when the cold comes in or something happens and it's caused my body to tense up, the muscles get tight and start hurting, my blood mm. pressure elevates. I try to explain that to the doctors, but unfortunately, they're not trying to hear that. They, they're God. They know better than me. I said, but guess what? Well, I know I my do. body. I know it's strong. And this is what I'm going to do. Patrick, I do want you to take care of your high blood pressure, though. Watch it because even though diabetes is the number one, uh, what's sailing behind that is high blood pressure. You dealing with you talking to me? Right. Well, I've dealt with high blood pressure, polycystic kidney disease. You know a lot right. of things, even osteoporosis now, procedure in the back. Mm. You you name it. Mm. God has delivered me from everything or made me strong enough to deal with it and fight about it. But I um now I want to ask you a question just before I end the show. All right. Um, well, you know, we I already know that you pray and believe in God because you talk about faith. Um, what would you say to a, 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 a widower, a single dad or a man or a woman that's a caregiver for somebody that's sick? What advice would you say? Or Well, I'll say any help you can get, take it. Don't try to take care of all the load yourself. All right. It just help out there for you. Attain it. Accept it. You know, stay stay prayerful. Yeah. Um keep keep the faith. Amen. Don't don't Amen. let any don't let any don't let any anything derail you. Because the enemy's out there 
like a wrong lion seeking whom he yes. may devour. And the time you drop that faith, he's seeking to devour you and destroy you. So, um, yeah, so in any case, you know, yeah, so in any case, he's, he's going to try to destroy us every way possible. Okay. Well, Patrick, I want you to give a shout out to whoever you wanted to give a shout out to. So um, I guess you're not able to because you are frozen up, and I guess I would have to end the show. But I know you have people that you work you work with on your company and stuff like that. But I thank everybody for tuning in. I thank everybody for being a blessing, and I will see you next week on another different great show on the Lisa Baxter Show. I truly appreciate you. Don't you ever forget it. I'll always need you, your support. Share everything on Urban Health Outreach Media Facebook page. It is definitely worth it. Bless your life and good night.